Route 423 is an attempt to document all 423 national parks of the United States Park System while collecting each park's unique stamp along the way. The project started as a way to highlight my cancellation stamp collection. But the stamps are a means to an end. Every park tells a story. They are physical links to the natural and historic past. My purpose in creating these videos is to explore the story of America through the lens of 423 national parks, to provide eyewitness to its diverse geography and history beyond what a textbook could provide. Welcome to Route 423. The Vanderbilt Mansion is a national park located in the Hudson Valley, slightly north of Springwood and Hyde Park. This particular mansion isn't the only Vanderbilt home, it's not even the largest. So what makes it special enough to warrant its own park? The park's value lies in the fact that it is a microcosm of the Gilded Age, a period where American business dynasties were in a domestic arms race to build the most decadent house possible, no matter how tacky it looked. It was built by the third generation of Vanderbilt, a Frederick Vanderbilt and his wife, Louise. The two managed to build their glitzy chateau at the height of this period, before little inventions like the income tax started to make these types of homes impossible to maintain. The original estate consisted of the mansion, including the latest technologies such as central heating, electricity, and indoor plumbing. There was a pavilion, a coach house, a power station, two new bridges, boat docks, a railroad station, and all the surrounding farms. The cost of all this renovation was an eye-watering $2,250,000 in 1890, equaling $76 million today. Any kind of aesthetic cohesion was thrown out the gold-rimmed windows, as the Vanderbilts crammed every single room with all the expensive items they could buy. I felt like I was walking around the Spencer Mansion from Resident Evil, and that leaning on a statue might accidentally open a secret passage somewhere else. It gets weirder when you consider the fact that the entire 50-room house is designed for a whopping two people to live in, Minus all the servants. Can you imagine sleeping in this house? I already have a hard time running up the steps after turning off the lights in my own home. And that's a 10 second sprint. It's a five minute marathon in the Vanderbilt house. The Vanderbilts didn't even spend the majority of their time there, preferring to summer somewhere else. As the tour guide said, if you use the word summer as a verb, you probably have more money than you know what to do with. Does this wealth make you a little sick? It made me sort of ill, especially when you frame it against the average income of an American at the time, which was only $380 a year. Did the workers on Vanderbilt's railways and docks ever see his house? Did he see theirs? The only people of a working class background that could see the house were servants, which was the only part of the mansion I did not get to. But there were over 60 of them when the Vanderbilts lived there. It will be something worth coming back to and to hear their perspective on what the house looked like. Soon American society quickly forgot about the gilded mansion that had hosted so many parties. When Frederick died in 1938, only the house was left. The woman it passed to, a niece of Frederick's wife, Louise, considered it an ugly lump. She also couldn't sell it. I can't imagine that the buyer pool for 50 room mansions was very high. Actually, it was their neighbors, the Roosevelts, who suggested that she donate the house to the park system. That's how it passed down to us today, remaining virtually untouched. It's a personal portrait into the home of an elite family that few ever got to see and representative of the desperate war waged between newly rich industry barons and old guard aristocrats over who had the most status, a war largely invisible and ignored by the American people. <laughs> 